In this video, we're going to talk about how to multiply and divide rational expressions. To multiply rational expressions, the rule for multiplying is to take the numerators and multiply those together, take the terms in the denominator, and find that product, but keep in mind that any term that's in the denominator cannot equal zero. So in this case, Q cannot equal zero and S cannot equal zero. So if either one of them is equal to zero or both, then we're going to have an undefined product. So basically the steps are this. Number one, completely factor each numerator and denominator. From there, you should maybe notice any common factors that need to be reduced. And step three, use the rule here to the left to multiply the numerators and denominators that remain. So the first step actually is not multiplying, it is factoring, then reducing, and then you might multiply anything that remains. In our first example, you can see a rational expression multiplied by another rational expression. So what we're actually going to do is factor every individual numerator and denominator, look for common factors to reduce, and then multiply whatever remains. Looking at 9x plus 9, I can see that that would factor as 9 common factor, leaving x plus 1. In our denominator of 4x plus 8, I can also see that common factor is going to be used again. 4 is our greatest common factor, and that would leave x plus 2 in the quantity, multiplied by the other rational expression. With 2x plus 4, greatest common factor of 2, we're left with x plus 2. In our denominator, 3x squared minus 3, it looks like 3 is our greatest common factor. And that would leave x squared minus 1. Now before you move on too quickly, when you have a power other than 1, slow down and see if you need to do some more factoring. x squared minus 1, that's actually the difference of squares. So we should be rewriting that, keeping 3, but x squared minus 1, remember, will break down as x times x for the first terms and 1 times 1 for the second part of those binomials. Since there's no first degree term, one factor needs to be plus, the other needs to be minus. So I'll just put a line through there to show how we have continued to factor that denominator. So our final goal now is to look in this numerator. What I actually have here is one big division bar. All of the terms in the numerator are being multiplied by each other. 9 times the quantity times 2 times the quantity. So are there any 9's in the denominator? That's what you want to ask yourself when you start to look for reducing. 9 and 4 will not reduce, but 9 and 3 will reduce. 9 is 3 times 3, so that's going to leave us 3. Here's a factor of 2. 2 is going to reduce with 4 in the denominator because 4, remember, can be written as 2 times 2. Okay, so 2 in the numerator reduces with one of those 2's in the denominator. Then we go on to the quantities. The quantity of x plus 1, that is not the same as quantity x plus 2, so no reducing there. But looking over here, here's a quantity of x plus 1. That's going to reduce completely with this quantity of x plus 1. Do you see any other quantities that would reduce? Hopefully you saw x plus 2 with x plus 2. So I'm going to highlight everything that I didn't cross out. There's a 3 in the numerator, and I guess that's all that remains in the numerator. 
factor of 2, and quantity of x minus 1. So everything that I have highlighted still remains in the rational expression. 3 is by itself in the numerator, but 2 times the quantity of x minus 1 remain in the denominator. This is our final answer. Now it is okay if you go ahead and distribute the 2. So another acceptable answer would be 2 times x, which is 2x. 2 times negative 1 would be minus 2. So either one of these is the correct solution. We tend to like to leave answers in factored form, however, because that makes it much easier for us to tell if we really have reduced completely or not. So I would suggest you leave your answers in factored form. Here's example 2. 10 minus 2x divided by 7 is multiplied by 14 divided by 5x minus 25. So I'll just start with my first rational expression. In this numerator, 10 minus 2x, it looks like we have a greatest common factor of 2, leaving 5 minus x. The denominator, 7, that is a prime number, so there's no more factoring to do. It's done multiplied by our other rational expression. 14, however, is 2 times 7. So I might want to write it that way. Do you see any reason why I would consider writing it in its factored form? Eventually, 7 is going to be reduced. But I won't do that at the moment. Denominator, 5x minus 25. It looks like 5 would be the greatest common factor to start with. That leaves x minus 5. So now I would look for common factors to reduce. Some of you might like to put this division bar. 7 reduces with 7. Can I reduce 2 with 2? Say no. They are both in the numerator, so they are not reducing. They will actually get multiplied by each other and remain in the problem. So don't cross those out. Quantity of 5 minus x with x minus 5. I seem to recall that we talked about terms that are in reverse order of each other and subtraction involved. So this is where we probably want to factor out a minus 1 and reverse the order of the terms. So I'm going to rewrite that binomial by factoring out minus 1 and reversing the terms. Is it correct? Negative 1 times x is still minus x. Negative 1 times minus 5 is still positive 5. But it's helpful to write it this way so that quantity of x minus 5 and quantity of x minus 5 in the denominator will be reduced. I'm going to highlight anything that remains. 2 was not crossed out. Minus 1, don't forget that one, and 2. So those three terms will need to be multiplied in our numerator. And the only term remaining in our denominator is 5. So our final answer in the numerator, 2 times minus 1 times 2 would be negative 4. Our denominator is 5. Final answer, negative 4 fifths.